Good evening and welcome to the March 16th edition of Desert with Dan here on this vigil of St. Patrick's Day on this gloriously uh, warm and comfortable evening. We're at our outside studio here with our producer James and uh, oh what a great day. I'd shut up long enough and now the bird. Hear this bird? I don't know if you can hear the bird or not. We've got birds chirping. It's just wonderful. I went out to the garden and picked these today. It's great actually. These are the plastic flowers we have out here all the time. But anyway, yes, we are getting hope that new life is springing up. Not only is today the vigil of St. Patrick's Day, but uh, this week we celebrate uh, the Solemnity of St. Joseph on Friday. And this is uh, the year of St. Joseph as proclaimed by our Pope Francis. And so let's start with a prayer to him. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Oh, glorious St. Joseph, with Jesus and Mary, you knew hunger, uncertainty, and illness. But you turned your chaste heart to God in your need and those of your family and accepted the Father's response as events unfolded. Help us to recognize God's will in our lives and to accept what God bestows in loving kindness. May we imitate your example and be shielded with your protecting help so that we may live a noble life, die a holy death, and secure everlasting happiness in heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. We are uh, looking at some ways for a meaningful celebration of the year at St. Joseph, so if you have some ideas, we're more than open to be able to have them. But um, I, my home parish is uh, St. Joseph Church in Crescent Springs, Kentucky. I went to St. Joseph Elementary School in Crescent Springs, Kentucky. Becky Brown, our current principal at Mary Queen, the, uh, where she was principal the, before she came to Mary Queen, was St. Joseph Elementary School in Crescent Springs, Kentucky, my alma mater. So uh, we have some good uh, St. Joseph ties uh, around here. My uh, the memorial card from my dad. Uh, at his death, had a picture of uh, St. Joseph the Worker on it, the statue that was actually uh, outside of our, our home parish. And uh, uh, there's lots to be said for St. Joseph. You know, there's not a word quoted uh, that St. Joseph said that anywhere in the scriptures. He just was, uh, he just, just were, his, his actions spoke volumes. My gosh. The chances he took and the trust that he had in God and the way he had of being able to figure out that these dreams he was having or whatever were actually God's will and not some crazy idea, you know. Uh, boy, we sure sure can use his intercession and be able to grow in his qualities to be able to, to be able to come to know God's will and then just not talk about it all the time or whatever. Just go out and quietly do it uh, and do it in our midst of our families. Great stuff. Great stuff. So, Dessert with Dan, you know what you get when you get Dessert with Dan. You get me blathering on endlessly for a half hour unless you have the good sense to be able to stop me by asking some questions. So, uh, you know, get your questions in through the uh, uh, chat there or whatever, the comments. Do we, do we have any questions ahead of time? We do. We, we, we do. Questions, questions came in. Very wise. Very good. Okay. What do we got? Father Dan, what are you looking most forward to this spring? Oh, what am I looking most forward to this spring? I'm looking forward to being able to celebrate Easter together as a community, at least with lots of people. I really did, did miss that this past year. Uh, that's what I'm missing from uh, as a, as a, uh, on, a, on a group basis. And uh, it, personally, I, I must say I'm looking forward to getting my second vaccination shot near the end of March so that... Uh, not too long after Easter, I will be uh, uh, fully vaccinated and therefore uh, freed up more and more to liturgical ministry and other kinds of things and, uh, and all that, that 
that would give me the opportunity to do. So uh, that's what I'm looking forward to. Right. Yep. Anything? Actually, anything else here? we do, Father Dan. All right. When is it going to be possible to have traditional music during Mass, allowing everyone to sing the whole song? And when are we going to eliminate the use of the big sticks guiding the congregation where to sit? All right, we are going to uh, have music uh, when everybody sings as soon as that, uh, the health science says that that won't help to spread the disease. So I don't know. Uh, that's the reason why we're not doing it is because it's, that's one of the big ways that, that the disease gets spread is through that kind of expressive, you know, over a, a period of time singing and all. So when it's safe, we will do it. When will we take the staffs from our shepherds so that uh, I, they can use them or not use them? I like them using it because it's easy then when somebody points to somebody who's going to show you where to sit, uh, that it's kind of like a badge. It's big enough for you to be able to see to go to, go to those people. So if you're bothered by that, I would suggest that you take the Lenten prescription and change your mind and change your attitude. They are not staffs meant to beat you into submission. What they are are good identification kinds, and think of a kindly shepherd rather than the prison guard that you may think of right now. Thank you, Father Dan. Oh, you're so welcome. Is the uh, Thursday night of penance, the penance service, going to be similar to the communal service we have had in the past? No. The Thursday night of penance simply is uh, you, you come in, you'll be directed uh, immediately or as soon as possible to a uh, uh, to a priest who's available well, before priest hearing confessions and it'll be more like Saturday afternoon or Sunday afternoon confessions one-on-one uh, -on -one. and then once you receive confession then you leave the object is is to not have a lot of people together for much of a long period of time in the same space hopefully it'll be uh, warm enough where even we don't we can have if there it does wind up being a backup of some sort the line can be outside, and people can be uh, socially distanced and uh, praying and talking and thinking, and it won't be too, uh, too chilly. But we, uh, one of the things that helps uh, this uh, virus spread is being in enclosed spaces for longer periods of time. So we're, uh, we're trying to eliminate that wherever we can and still provide plenty of access to the sacrament of reconciliation. Well, speaking of spreading the virus, Father Dan, can you tell us a bit about your discernment process? particularly concerning getting the vaccine. Yes, last time we had uh, dessert with Dan, I was asking you for input on whether or not to get the vaccine and explain my reasons why I was thinking this way or that way. Uh, again, to know that it had nothing to do with the science of it, just whether or not, you know, uh, again, it, m it might be something of the richer countries just hogging it for themselves at all. Um, Two things uh, helped me in my discernment and decision making. Uh, number one was uh, saying that in a number of the countries that may not have a whole lot of the vaccine right now, the average age is a lot lower than it is in the United States. Uh, and since the uh, coronavirus is more serious when it's gotten by people who are older, what you want to do is you want to vac vaccinate the older people first. And so, therefore, it would make sense to have countries with an older population, like the United States, um, get be have a jump on the vaccine um, for uh, 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 as compared to a country that has a lot younger population. They don't need as much vaccine in order to be able to vaccinate the same percentage of uh, folks who are in the danger age range. The second thing was is that uh, really shortly after that, I doubt because of my reservations, but I, uh, and all, that uh, the United States join in together with an international push more and more to make more money, more vaccines and all available uh, to, to all the other nations. I'm not saying that it's all gonna be fair and still money rules the day, not God's kingdom uh, in regard to who gets, who gets things first and, and all, but um, I really wanted to raise the question, a good time for myself, and uh, I really wanted to raise it for, uh, for all of us, just as something to be able to consider. 
Another factor also was the fact that uh, there were some uh, people in the parish who would uh, uh, not kill me, but uh, who I would, might be afraid of what they might say next time they saw me. Uh, they made it clear if I didn't get the vaccine. Uh, a minor, a minor uh, little push in the uh, what I I am totally at peace with is the right direction. So, thank you all for uh, your responses too. All right, we're good. Okay, so, oh, today, this afternoon, uh, was a, a busy day. We had a wonderful celebration for the funeral for one of our oldest uh, parishioners, certainly, I think, one of the longest married uh, parishioners, uh, Florence Pleasant. Uh, her husband, James, died a few months ago uh, earlier, and we buried him um, as well. And uh, They had been married for over 70 years. And uh, a great story, a great love story, uh, a great marriage story. And uh, so having had her, uh, her funeral earlier in the day uh, was in um, a lot of meetings. It was at a meeting at 7.30, a meeting at 9.30, uh, the funeral, uh, well actually a meeting at 10.30, then the funeral at 11.30, a meeting right after I got back from the funeral. And, when uh, that was all over and I got caught up with the emails I needed to get caught up with and the phone calls and the texts I needed to get caught up with, I found that I had a precious old 45 minutes before our uh, prayer and supper together here on Tuesday evenings. And I took a walk through the neighborhood and boom, the daffodils are out, little small, little tiny white flowers. You know, wildflowers carpeting uh, some of the front yards. I mean, this was the day, at least in my looking, where the switch got turned on in several of our uh, our neighbors' places. And as I'm sitting here now, I am looking out at the lilac bush that we have planted outside of our screened in porch here that my beloved neighbor, Nancy Hall, gave uh, to me several years ago. And I planted out here, and lo and behold, just as I would hope lilacs would do, the first green shoots of get opened up out of the little buds, and we're starting to see the green. And oh, it won't be long till we have that wonderful lilac smell, the sure sign of spring. So uh, it's just one of those great days, and we got some birds that just won't shut up, which is wonderful as well. So. I did the, you know, I, I, I am enjoying it. There's a little voice in the back of my head said, this is mid-March in Kentucky. You know how long it is until spring really takes hold, you know, and, and uh, I understand. And there may be snow to come, but especially this year after, which we're looking at a year since COVID really, really shut us down. Uh, spring is... Uh, in my experience, more welcome than ever. You know, um, what Jesus revealed in his ultimate dying and ultimate spectacular rising is, uh, you can tell all creation is in him because creation sure looked like it was dead. And there'd be parts of our hearts maybe sometimes and spirits through all this that maybe felt that they were dead. And uh, I'm feeling some life stir both uh, inside me, inside us, and feeling some, looking and seeing some life stir outside, and for that I am grateful. I'm not necessarily surprised, but it's always good to see that what you've been gifted to know through faith uh, actually is, is true. So that's, that's great. What a day. What a day. Well, uh, again, Questions all, the, all along if you want to. Otherwise, we're going to have to talk about boring topics like sex and pornography. So I'm reading, uh, wow, just uh, started reading what I think is a really good and helpful book. It's called Resisting Throwaway Culture, How a Consistent Life Ethic Can Unite a Fractured People. It's by uh, Charles Camosi. He's a... Uh, Associate Professor of Theological and Social Ethics at Fordham University in New York City. And he, uh, he's using that, that true, across the board, that respect for life, or what do you call it, consistent life ethic, uh, to be able to take some 
you know, uh, again, we know you can't, the, 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 the range of issues that are really life issues, you can't pigeonhole that into a conservative or liberal or Democrat or Republican or whatever. And uh, to really be able to call us all together in that, uh, I think I think he's, uh, I'm fascinated by what he's saying and, and being on the right track. I want to stop, before I get into the uh, his, his little section here on porn, king of consumerist sexual culture, I, uh, I want to be sure that James knows you can interrupt me whenever there's a question. Okay. Before we dive into yeah, that, okay. one just came I in. I knew I would wind up being able to get you to ask questions so that I don't get to this chapter. That's fine. It's part of my ploy. No, we still want to hear about the chapter, but oh, first, okay. can you tell us more about signing up for Holy Week and Easter Masses? Signing up for Holy Week and Easter Masses. Yes. So that's, uh, for those of you who did that for Christmas, it's a very similar experience. You uh, go to the website, which is, say it along with me, mqhr.org and you look on there and just you'll see one of the big blocks pop up, pop up right away yes for about the, the holy week services easter services you go on that and it it shows you what time the services are and if the words if the you know the name is in english the mass the service will be in english if it's in spanish it'll be in spanish and uh you you know uh, just once again Click on that, and uh, it'll show you what's uh, available. Uh, as I saw, even at, by the end of the day, I think it was even Sunday, at least even to Monday, uh, the church, you, you know when everybody wants to go to Mass when it comes to Easter time. It's Easter Sunday morning. So I think our capacity, again, we need to keep that social distancing uh, six foot, you know, unless you live together, with the, live together and under the same roof. So... Um, we've got, uh, you know, that we're at capacity, I think, for the English masses already at 8 uh, and at 11. And then we start to fill up the, uh, we'll have masses at the same time in the gym. Uh, and we'll probably fill those up as well. Um, we're, uh, we'll wait and see how that goes. Then, um, well, just a side point, we're really blessed that spring break is Holy Week. See, normally during school, when school's in session, we can't use the gym for any weekend services and all because all that, you know, when you've got school, you really need to keep that building kind of sealed off and not have a lot of other people, outside people in there, you know. And after they're in, you got to clean up really well and everything. Um, and so the only time we could really get in there would be if it would be near, like during spring break where there's time to be able to set up without having kids, you know, the children be in there uh, and, and, and school, that building being used for anything else. And we can have the Sunday Mass and Sunday afternoon we're going to tear down real quick and they're going to come in and sanitize uh, on Sunday afternoon and evening uh, so that it can be ready back for exclusive use for school, school on Monday when they come back from spring break. So anyway, that's why we're blessed to be able to use the gym uh, on Easter. Uh, if uh, we get filled up in the gym, we're already filled up in the church for some of the masses on uh, Easter. Uh, in, uh, you know, we got Good Friday and, and Holy Thursday too uh, for signups uh, and the Easter vigil. Uh, we will prop that our our fallback position for sure would be we will uh, we'll give people information and then go to their cars. And they can tune in. We'll have the mass from the church broadcast over an FM radio frequency. You can listen to the mass, and also it will be live streamed. So if you want to use your phone, you can watch the mass on your phone. And then at communion time, you can come to the Mary statue that's there in front of the gym entrance of the Education Life Center there. That's used for the school. Um, you can come there to be able to receive communion for Easter Sunday and give your Easter Sunday uh, offertory donation, if you want, and, uh, um, and then uh, finish back in your car in, in, uh, in kind of quiet thought and uh, end the Mass together with, uh, by listening and watching with everybody else. Um, that's for sure what we'll do. Uh, depend if the weather's decent or whatever, is there the possibility that there could be a pop-up Mass in one of the fields around the, on the campus that we've got? 
Uh, we just have to look and see and look and see at the availability of priests. Well, we have two of our priests tied up. We have, we have a half of a priest uh, otherwise who's got some commitments other places. We'll try to do the best we can do there. But uh, we certainly want to be sure that everybody, you know, you can be sure if you sign up and it says you've got a place, you know and you can count on having a place uh, to go to Mass. And if you don't, you can count on being able to participate uh, by listening and if you want to on your phone by seeing. You can count on being able to receive Holy Communion on Easter Sunday as well. Uh, we really want to take the best care of you that we, uh, that we can. Um, so suggestions would be uh, to, uh, you know, the, again, uh, there are some people who just love to go to the Easter Vigil and the other, the other folks, uh, you know, just avoid it like the plague. Uh, it does start at 9 o'clock, so it's a little bit later. This year, particularly, one of the things that people, that keep people away from the Easter Vigil is the uh, time. Usually it runs at least two, if not two and a half, or close to three hours. Uh, because of COVID restrictions, uh, we're not doing any baptisms or confirmations or First Communion at the Easter Vigil. There's no procession with the candles and all. There is a lit fire in church and all. I, I, I would anticipate that that Mass isn't going to take any longer than an hour, an hour, and I don't see what's going to make it longer than an hour or an hour and ten minutes at the most. Uh, so if 9 p.m. on Sunday, if you don't get in, you know, you really want to go to Mass at a church, that's probably your best your best bet at this particular time to be able to go there. Um, for the other services that we've got, Good Friday and all, we've got several different op options there that we think will be able to help uh, help hold everybody. But we will uh, we will see. Regardless, for any and all of the services, we will have that one option. If there's no room left physically inside the church or inside the gym, then uh, when you're in your car, you'll be able to hear if you want to, you'll be able to see on your phone. You will be able to receive communion. And uh, we want to make sure of that this whole week. Long answer to the question, but it, there's lots of ins and outs and, and everything there. And again, you can only imagine how many people. We've just got such wonderful volunteers uh, to be able to be sure that, uh, you know, not only all the regular normal liturgical roles get filled, but also that there are uh, people who are... Uh, help them keep everybody else safe, who can be identified easily if you need help because they're the ones with the shepherd staffs in their hands, gently guiding people and helping them. Sorry about that. Uh, got anything else? Yeah, before we delve into the porn again, uh, how are we doing with the collections and overall are we meeting our budget needs? Um, we are... Uh, we anticipated that we would, uh, certainly that we cut due to COVID and everything, that our collections would be down. But we still set what I would consider to be a challenging uh, goal in our budget as we figured that, started that off last, and we were guessing last, uh, you know, to July when we finalized the budget for this fiscal year. It goes from July 1st to June 30th, so up to then. So far, uh, this far, we're, you know, uh, well, what do we got? You know, for March, April, May, and June, so through a three and a half uh, months to go in the fiscal year, we're, I mean, just almost right at budget from uh, offertory, um, from offertory contributions. So that's, uh, that's, that's been uh, really good, a good, uh, forecasting uh, the Holy Spirit led us to, and people really have been uh, have been generous uh, for that. So that's great. Um, because we did forecast that we would take in less than we usually do in a regular year, and that is true. We were taking in less, and we budgeted to do that. Uh, we did budget for a deficit. We came when we we budgeted that we were going to come out in the red. We weren't going to lay people off. Uh, we were going to be able to keep our base, try to you know, do our absolutely best to keep our basic par parish services uh, you know, going, not only in liturgical services, but other services, certainly. We have a lot less uh, kids in formation. We have a lot more 
kids in Mary Queen School than we thought that we would have uh, and all. Um, and we're running, we're running in the red, but we plan to run in the red. We're running actually a little less in the red than we thought we would be. We've been trying to cut costs at, uh, here and there uh, for that. Um, and we, uh, again, due to um, your generosity over the years and uh, just fantastic financial planning by whoever's been pastor around here for the last 10 years or so, because that's not true. But anyway, uh, we, we, we do have money saved up for a rainy day and it's a rainy day, so we're properly using that money to be able to get us through this uh, this deficit time. So, uh, all in all, we are doing all right. Could we use a lot more money? Oh, we could do so many good services with with that money. And uh, we're going to take take good care of our building. The buildings are, um, uh, you know, the parish office, the old rectory uh, where the priest used to live. Now it's all offices now. It's uh, it's really it's showing its age, and it's again not a not a building that was built for offices, but it's doing okay. Everybody's been, you know, a lot of people have been saying, "Oh, you got to replace that." And, nah, we're not going to replace it as long as I'm around, but I, I can definitely see people begin to make more and more of a case for that, uh, and, and make that building into something that's more usable for multiple things in the parish. Uh, it's also the youth group uh, building, which is uh, which is which is great, but we could have a better space for them, too. Um, and then our, our wonderful new church is over 25 years old now, and we have wonderfully redone the inside, but the outside, as James can attest, uh, there, some of the soffit stuff, whatever a soffit is, uh, is, kind of, you know, is, is coming off. Uh, we're starting to talk about, you know, when does the boiler need to be replaced, etc., etc. So we need uh, lots of money. But we're, we're getting by. We're getting by a lot better than some of the households out there. So um, I, uh, I really understand that people can't uh, dig in much deeper. And in fact, again, one of the things we've got, be sure to have this aware. The Lord might send some people to you, or you may be one of the people. We've got money to help people who are in emergency situations. You know, we can, we, we can see if there can't be, their situation can't be covered by our Catholic charities where we all chip in to be able to help out with or whatever. Um, you know, we've got some parish monies to be able to help and we want to be able to use them. So uh, we've got that. Well, there we go. You have successfully done it. We're not going to, uh, I'm not going to share with you the section about porn from resisting throwaway culture. You're going to have to get it yourself. That the Lord uh, leads me to, uh, it inspires me to share some of that with you. Uh, and then to share what we have to offer uh, in the church and in our teaching that uh, it may very well make sense to uh, people in this particular age and culture, uh, this particular time. Um, uh, maybe we'll get around to sharing that someday or when we can meet. These are the kind of things you really want to talk about in person and stuff with the group and sit down and talk. And so that, that'll work out fine. Um, one other thing that I discovered today that I think is just really, really great and can be very helpful for us as we, I don't think we'll ever again get back to normal. And once people have discovered Zoom and that they can be part of meetings if they're out of town or they're maybe not feeling as well but still want to be part of the meeting or they don't want to spend the money on gas or destroy the environment, uh, you know, if you have a, a, some of the group meeting in a church, and you have some of the group meeting at home, once we can have some of the group meeting at church. You know, you could do Zoom, but you don't really feel part of it if there's a group of live, you know, people there together in person and all. There's a thing called the uh, owl, or what owl? I don't know, not the Zoom owl, but I, I forget what that, but it, it's a thing, it looks like an owl, and it it, it, it it will turn to the person who's speaking at an in-person meeting or and put just their face up on, the, uh, on your screen, and it'll turn, at the same time, just put up a face on the screen of the person if you're talking, if you're coming through Zoom. So you see everybody at the meeting. So anyway, that's, that, that's great. We're going to close with a glory be, and I'm going to go to a parish pastoral council meeting. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. St. Patrick, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray for us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.